Thanks, Stefan. Good morning, everybody. It's been an honor for me to uh, open this second day of conference. And um, yeah, let's just start. Let's see what, uh, what the story will bring. Uh, today, I'm going to tell you something about Stop Doing Scrum. It is something that I told a team years ago. Uh, but before I actually start my story, let me tell me, uh, let me introduce myself. So who am I? My name is Jeroen de Jong. Uh, Stefan already said, I started out as a, a developer years ago, a PHP development. Uh, but yeah, sort of same as, the, as Stefan's company. I've been doing a lot of stuff. I've been sort of a jack of all trades. I've been a product owner, scrum master, uh, developer. Uh, I'm self-employed. I have my own company for years. I have multiple companies in the past. And I did a lot of things over all these years. Since the past five years, I've started focusing myself on, on agile coaching and scrum mastery. And basically that story or that, that, uh, that path for me already started back in 2011 when I first encountered scrum, which for me opened, uh, or at least explained a lot of things that I was already doing. And uh, yeah, why also a lot of things that were failing at that point in my career uh, weren't working out as well, especially the professionalization of one of my companies. Uh, on this picture, you see a lot of other uh, topics that I care about that I have in my life, like a family, like three young children. Uh, if you want to know more about me, contact me afterwards on uh, Discord and we can always hang out. Before I start, again, it's another but, uh, I'm going to use Mentimeter during this talk. Uh, so I want to invite everybody to pick your phone, pick your device, or uh, click the link that I'm now going to post in the Discord channel uh, to connect uh, to, to Mentimeter. Just go to menti.com, enter 29449733. And I'm going to do it myself here on my device as well. And if you get there, you will see uh, the title before we start and a little heart. If you press that heart, you should be able to uh, connect to it. Some sh small hearts should be raised at the uh, uh, right bottom corner. And I can see that at least some of the people are connected to the Mentimeter and uh, you can interact with me. During the talk, uh, you can ask questions uh, in, inside the Discord channel, but you can also use Mentimeter. So uh, when you use Mentimeter, I will be able to see them on my screen as well. And if there's time at the end, I will answer them. Otherwise, I will be hanging around a little bit longer in Discord and I can answer them there. Uh, during the talk itself, uh, I try to stay on my, the story itself because my experience is that works, uh, works out best. I see at this point, at least four people have found the, the Mentimeter. Uh, if you join late or if anyone joins late or if you haven't your device ready, you can always join at a later stage. Uh, because uh, I told a little bit about myself, I'm currently a Scrum Master, uh, but I also want to know what kind of people are currently listening to my talk. So what is your current role, your current accountability? Uh, you can use Mentimeter to just uh, put in your name. So hi, Paul, nice seeing you there or at least I'm not seeing you there, but at least I see uh, that you're in. Uh, what kind of people are in there? Are these uh, software developers, business owner, developer? Yeah, that's good. Because now I'm very curious what uh, what everybody of you thinks of Scrum, but we'll, uh, we'll come to that at, uh, at some later uh, time. Because right now I'm going to start telling you the story, a story that I lived uh, already some time, I think now six or seven years ago, how I helped the company uh, and especially the team within that company uh, to become better in, in software development, to, to become better in, in working together. It was a small company. So that's, uh, again, uh, the, the, the disclaimer initially as well. Uh, it wasn't a big company like ABN AMRO or some other uh, big, large enterprise. It was a small company. Uh, with a small de IT department. The IT department uh, depended on one product owner, one sort of Scrum Master, because it was uh, uh, actually a developer who was also doing some Scrum Master roles uh, for other developers. And although the developers were accountable for basically everything that can be uh, think of in, in software development, so uh, front-end, back-end, uh, operations, AWS, uh, Azure, uh, user experience and design. And I came in as a, as a Scrum coach. Uh, the team itself was together for already some uh, some time. Uh, a couple of years back, or no, I think a year back before I started, uh, Scrum was introduced. Uh, 
by an external coach and some uh, uh, another lead developer that uh, let, uh, left the company at some point. And the team itself was really struggling. They, they, yeah, they didn't see the, the benefit of Scrum. They didn't like it. Uh, yeah, and they called me and asked me to help. Well, can you coach us? Can you uh, teach us? Can you see what's, what's wrong uh, with the way we are working and see how we can improve this? Uh, so I observed the team for uh, for some time and I, I talked to a lot of the, the team members and yeah, one thing stood out for me. They all thought, well, Scrum sucks. They, why do we need it? It doesn't work. Uh, yeah. Why do, do we actually need to do it? We can do so much more if we just drop all the, the Scrum rituals and, and, and drop everything else. So I did an exercise with them to, to see during one of the retrospectives, well, why does Scrum not work for you? And that's the same question I now want to ask for all of you. So everybody who's uh, who currently uh, observing and uh, listening to my talk, uh, do you have experience with Scrum? And yeah, what is what is your opinion? Do you also think that Scrum sucks, or maybe you just like Scrum? Maybe you're, you're not sharing the same opinion. So uh, let's have a inter little interaction. See if that works. I think the, the number of attendees aren't still that high, but let's see if at least uh, some people can can enter. Uh, uh, answer this question. Why does Scrum not work? Uh, what? Too many meetings. When only the dev team does Scrum and the rest of the organization doesn't. Yes, that's also something that I recognize a lot, especially when the companies grow larger. I have good experience with Scrum, and I need to switch this one, otherwise I can't retreat it. I have good experience with Scrum, so I'm curious why it doesn't work. Really great. I think the, especially the last person uh, shares the same opinion as, as I have. So let's uh, let's find out what I actually told uh, the team eventually. Uh, but first, yeah, I did the same exercise, already told you. So I got ex uh, the same answer, too many meetings. Uh, yeah, the retrospective every, every time is the same thing. So why should we do it at all? Uh, the shifting priorities, business always is changing their mind. There's a lot of ad hoc work, uh, nothing to demo. So yeah, we do a, a sprint demo every two weeks, but yeah, there isn't actually anything done. There isn't actually anything to show or the things that are show is very technical. So why show them at all? Uh, yeah, we don't want to do it, uh, of course. They don't want to change. They, they never liked it, uh, the daily, uh, yeah. The daily scrum, the, the, the stand-up meeting, it's just a status meeting. We tell what we did yesterday, what we're doing today. And of course, there are never any impediments. Although, yeah, they're working for four or five days for the same story. But uh, stories never fit in a single sprint. There's always overflow. And writing user stories too much work. Every time the same thing with, well, as a user, I want to do this. And yeah, it's just, it's very bothersome. And I, we, we don't want to do it anymore. So the team was very surprised when I proposed, well, why don't we stop doing Scrum? Let's just, yeah, stop with all the stand-ups, stop with the retrospective, stop with the demos, stop with the boring planning meetings because, well, everybody already knows what to do. And yeah, planning estimation, it's, it's all boring. It's, it's holding off uh, us developers from our work. And no more user stories, just write a simple task if we need to do something or better, just don't write any tasks. No more story points, no more sprints, no more Jira, just stop with everything. Well, that didn't go well with, with everybody, especially the product owner. And even a couple of developers felt, well, but Jira, everything is in there. I said, well, at least there, I want to have some single source of truth where we're working from. So let's uh, create a single physical board. This was pre-corona and everybody uh, in the team was still working in the offices. So I wanted to have a physical board and yeah, just make a small index card, uh, write down what you think, or at least what the product owner thinks uh, that needs to be done in, in such a way that it's clear and everybody should be able to pick it up uh, and use that. Yeah, but Jira, all the information is Jira. Yeah, okay. We still have Jira, we still have Confluence, we still have loads of other uh, st uh, places where information is stored. We just go back to the basics, just have one physical board with the, the work that we're currently doing. And if you want to refer to anything, that's fine. Jira has probably issue numbers, so use that uh, conference. Uh, uh, you can sometimes make a tiny URL or something. So if you want to add anything to the card, uh, yeah, write that to the card so you can at least find it. But make it visible to each other that what we're working on. And that was that. 
uh, at the end of the retrospective, we, we stopped doing Scrum. And the next sprint, or at least there wasn't any sprint anymore, we just started doing work. And of course, yeah, the board, the physical board on the wall uh, consisted of all the work that was there already because, well, again, we didn't finish all the stories in the sprint. And the product owner put up some new things that we're probably also going to do. And we worked, we started from there. And yeah, within two weeks, and that's funny because, well, normally we did sprints of two weeks. And now after two weeks, when we stopped doing any scrum, any activities, we ran into, into some issues. The first issue we ran into was what, what do we need to do? And that was on multiple levels. So uh, there, were, yeah, there were five developers in the team. One of the developers was the, was the lead developer. And that was also the person who most of the time knew what, what needed to be done. He was the person with the longest experience. He, had, uh, he knew exactly what to do where. He only had enough of, of one or two words on the index card. And he, he knew what software package, what, what server, everything was related to. But the other developers and the testers, they, they were something struggling. Well, it, it says this here, but what, what does it mean? What, what do I need to do? And same for the product owner. Uh, he wrote some things down, but as a lot of product owners, they are not always in the office. Uh, so people were, were starting to struggling a little bit. All the stories that they, uh, that they finished, uh, that they actually delivered from the last iteration were done. New things were going, uh, going into, the, yeah, into the flow, uh, but people didn't know what to work on. And yeah, you see it here in the picture. Of course, there's a lead developer. The lead developers sometimes, not all, at least, I hope not all, but I, I account a lot of elite developers who are uh, very into code. They just have their headset set on and they probably don't want to be bothered. And same thing for a product owner. He, uh, yeah, he wasn't sitting on this chair, but he was actually somewhere outside or somewhere outside the office talking to stakeholders, talking to customers, talking to business. Uh, so the team was, was having Trump some trouble to finding those answers. And a funny thing happened there because every time, Around 8.30, 9.30, people were coming into the office. And between that time, people were getting a drink. People were going to the, the coffee machine, getting a coffee, co getting a tea. And that became a point where at least the lead developer uh, wasn't busy yet. So he, would ju he just came into the office, or at least he had he's put his headset off and he was going to get a new coffee. The product owner was coming in. He was also getting a coffee. And that was the point that, that uh, yeah, uh, by itself grew as, as, as a single point of, of the day where the rest of the developers could catch up with the product owner, catch up with the lead developer and, and, and ask some clarifying questions. And this, yeah, within a week, we saw it happen a couple of times and without me interrupting or uh, suggesting anything, uh, actually the, the lead developer and product owner together proposed uh, in one morning, well, uh, you're asking all those questions. Uh, Let's make some kind of synchronization meeting uh, every day at 9.30, because then I know at least that I will, I will be in the offices, uh, where we can ask some questions, where we can clarify the work that we need to be done. And if there are any questions, I can help you or set an appointment later today. Uh, but well, let's just try that. And please leave, leave me alone for the rest of the day because I, I want to work. I want to, to finish stuff. And if you all keep interrupting me, I cannot do that. So they started doing that and things were going okay. Things were starting to work, uh, but those small interrupts, so impromptu uh, uh, synchronization meetings started to take longer and longer. So initially it was only a couple of minutes, but uh, within two weeks, yeah, they needed more time. Sometimes uh, they grabbed uh, the, one of the developers or they started talking at the coffee machine, uh, moved to their desks, uh, started continue talking there and half an hour was by or an hour was by before they actually continued there. And that, especially for the product owner, uh, yeah, was sometimes difficult because yeah, he had other meetings, he needed to be somewhere else. And yeah, when he was he needed to stay ad hoc at some random time in the office, that wasn't, wasn't easy. So uh, that's where I started to, to, uh, to step in because initially somebody proposed, well, let's schedule a meeting every week. And other people were already grumbling, yeah, but then we have a meeting of an hour every week. I don't want to do that. And I introduced a small concept of three people sessions where, uh, well, at least the product owner most of the time is needed. Uh, the lead developer knows a lot because that's sort of the, the single source of truth uh, with, with a lot of uh, historical information. 
And then, yeah, one of the other people has some information or wants to do something. So just start with the three people session. Uh, have a, a fixed time every week or two, uh, two times a week where we schedule half an hour and sit down together with, with the three of us to just clear up some things, to explain some things and uh, this, uh, decide on some work. And yeah, we just gave it a try and, and see what happens. So within a couple of, now within the first month, uh, we already, after we, we left all the meetings, we stopped doing anything. Uh, we already scheduled some, some new things. We, we first started with uh, three people sessions, uh, initially ad hoc, later fixed on the Monday and Wednesdays at 10 a.m. Uh, we had an optional daily alignment. It wasn't every day, but at least uh, around 9.30, everybody would be at around the coffee machine. They would be able to, to answer some questions and they would be able to help if they needed to. And yeah, things were, were starting to work out again. Uh, people were starting to, uh, to work and yeah, it looks promising. But yeah, pretty soon, and we, I already saw it coming earlier on as well, there was another issue. And that was uh, in, basically initiated from the product owner, but also from the business outside. Yeah, how long will it take to deliver this feature? Because yeah, we're now working. We're we're uh, yeah, everything is sort of fine, but you're now working for two weeks on this issue, and it's still not done. And and yeah, I have here three other issues that I also wanted to to yeah to be fixed before the end of the month. How, I am. What can we do here? And well, people were already saying, well, you can just prioritize them, and I, I, we we're, we're trying to fix them as soon as possible. So yeah, to just figure it out. So that's when I uh, when I stepped in again and said, well, first, before we we uh, yeah we start introducing anything else, let, let's take a look at the board. And this is what the board actually looked like. Uh, there were only two items in to do. Uh, almost everything was busy and one thing was done. So and yes, yeah, so of course, whenever something was done uh, after some time, the stickies or the, 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 the index cards were removed from the from the board. But a lot of things were busy. And yeah, delivery is slowing down. Nothing is really delivered. Uh, I asked the team, well, what, what is happening here? Yeah, but everything is almost done. We're almost there, but it is only, yeah, uh, uh, that person needs to do a little test. Uh, we're waiting for deployment here. Uh, yeah, we're, we're almost done. It's almost there. But they couldn't actually answer that question of when will it be done? Will it be the end of this week, the end of next week? Uh, how much time do you need? Uh, so I asked them, well, uh, what are you currently missing? Can we divide that, that, that busy column maybe in, in, into a, a separate column? And we had some discussion. We initially uh, identified, analyzed uh, the separate task, what needed to be done. And eventually we came up with an additional column, review, because uh, all the tasks that were done were actually done developing, but they needed a little bit of test. They needed uh, the deployment. They needed to be uh, peer reviewed. There was something that needed to be reviewed yet. So we made it visible. And well, within a couple of days, we exactly saw what I was already expecting. Everything was busy. A lot of things were, yeah, were done busy, but we're stuck in the review column because there was basically one person who was actually doing the automated testing and then the manual testing. Uh, and a lot of things needed to go by the lead developer or the product owner because they had a lot of business knowledge and they needed to, to uh, comply or confirm that the things that they were working on were actually correct. So that's when I stepped in again, and I uh, took me some uh, persuasion, uh, but in, I introduced a maximum number of, of items in each column. So uh, we were five developers, so we said, well, let's keep no more than two, two items in the review column and no more than three items in the busy column. And yeah, whenever something is done and you can move it from busy to review, uh, yeah, that can only happen whenever there's nothing left, or at least there's space in the review column, because one or two people are probably busy on that part. And that took some weeks to, to get used to for the developers. And if, in case you're wondering why there are two columns for busy, two columns for review, uh, whenever work is picked up, it's in the first column. Whenever work is done, it's in the second column of done, a uh, busy. But the work needs to be pulled into the review column. And that can only happen if, if there's space there. So in the example uh, shown here, uh, the board is completely full. There's no no more additional work can be picked up. So this resulted in people starting to work together because yeah, and that was also what what, what took the most time because people or the, the developers wanted to yeah 
instead of help each other or, or start testing themselves, they really want to, to pick up the next piece of code. But yeah, eventually together, uh, yeah, we decided that, that let, let's give this a try and let's see what happens. And it actually helped because people were actually starting to work out uh, even more. Uh, there's also a second column in review. Uh, initially, we didn't have it, but we found out that sometimes when, when work was done, when it was reviewed, it was, uh, it was actually actually done because it still needed to be pushed to production. And uh, yeah, they sometimes wanted to, to do bundle up some things in, in one go. So the, we were cheating a little bit, but basically, uh, for the most part, we were trying to, to stick with this uh, uh, work in progress limiting. And it actually worked out. People were, were working together. People were, uh, yeah, were, pro uh, uh, were proceeding again. And things were getting delivered. And actually, it went much faster. So actually, things were getting done again. But yeah. The product owner still had the same question, but when is it actually done? How, how can I? Uh, yeah, I, I need to make some some estimation. I, I make to I make some 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 forecast. Uh, the business wants to know when when certain features are, are being delivered. Uh, there was a lot of discussion that oh, we're not going to do any planning poker again. I don't want to do anything with Fibonacci sequence. I said, well, let's do just relative estimation. Just pick the uh, yeah. Start with the baseline. Uh, start with some user stories, so basically, yeah, not even user stories because we're not using those anymore. Start with some, some issues, some tasks on the board that we already finished and just determine are these, uh, yeah, extra small, are there really minor effort? Is the word there small effort, medium effort, large effort? So basically t-shirt sizing. Just put one, a couple of them that we already finished there on the ground underneath each of the, the letters. And then uh, see if, if new, when new tasks are coming in, Try to compare them with the, the the items there on the on the on the floor, and write down if it's an XS, an S, an M, an L, XL, and just estimate them. And uh, now the product owner initially didn't see any benefit in this because oh, now I know it's an extra large story, but I still don't know how, how how much time it takes. Well, that's true. We need to have some kind of history of how much long it takes. Uh, so initially, we decided to, to even estimate a couple of stories that we finished already, uh, also to this ones. And I told the, the, the product owner a little additional trick. Oh, and I missed one slide. Is just convert those letters to the numbers that we used before, so the Fibonacci sequence. So the extra small is now a 1, the, the small is a 2, and so on. And yeah, we don't have to tell the team. But just yeah, use those numbers, see how, how we can calculate the velocity. He was already familiar with the term. And see how many yeah, points we can deliver within a week or within a month, whatever you like. And based on that, and based with uh, the relative estimation, you might be able to, to, do, yeah, to prioritize, or at least to, to make some estimations, some, uh, some uh, forecast of when things are popping up. Uh, OK. Fine, now I know what to do. So let's, these three needs to be done first. I thought, well, which one actually need to do first? Because we still have that work in progress limit. And these are three pretty large stories. So yeah, we probably should not pick them up all at the same time. And that's where I introduced uh, basically a little elder step. I had a discussion with the product owner. Well, if these three need to be picked up first, I'm going to pick up this one. No, that's not possible. It's okay. So. This first one, who was the highest priority, shouldn't be the first to pick one up. And we basically did the same relative estimation only in a vertical order, uh, putting the one that needs to be highest uh, highest priority needed to be picked up first at the top and everything else below that. And yeah, we did some exercises on that. So we had a list of everything that needed to be done. We could, again, plot some numbers on that. And the product owner could use those numbers to uh, combine them together and see, yeah, use them to, to make an estimation what, what work needs to be picked up first and what work can be left later. Something else that I also introduced is creating a matrix with high value, low value, low effort, high effort, basically plotting those numbers of the stories on this matrix X. And by doing so, it became pretty easy for the product owner, but also pretty easy to communicate to business what stories, what tasks needed to be picked up first. Because if you have something with low effort and high value, 
what you see there at the uh, left uh, top quarter, or the left top quadrant. Uh, yeah, those things are, are very less effort, but deliver high, high, high value. So you want to do those things probably first. Uh, while things with low, low value and very high effort, yeah, we sh probably should never do that, or at least we should do that whenever all the other work is, uh, is done. So with this information, the product owner was able to, yeah, to start estimating, to, uh, to start pro uh, uh, prioritizing, and yeah, the team was able to, to, to yeah, start working on things and get things done again. Uh, something added also happened while we were doing this, uh, because yeah, we didn't have any synchronization with the product owner. So the product owner was doing this by himself. And sometimes he was just putting some new stuff uh, on the board that needed to be picked up. And then the team responded, well, if I had known this last week, or if I had known this, this was coming up when I was working on this story, uh, yeah, I might have already done it. And that was, would have been easier to, uh, to do. Plus those estimation sessions that I talked about before, those were also scheduled ad hoc. So there wasn't any cadence in it. So yeah, what should we do about that? And yeah, there was something else funny that happened because the team asked the product owner, well, can't we just do once every three, four weeks, take a look at the roadmap, take a look at everything what you have during the, that session, we can uh, together estimate together, make a forecast of, of how much work, how much effort everything is. And you can just sh yeah, share with us uh, the way we're going to. And we started doing that and we continued working again. Everybody was busy. So let's reflect a bit. We now have weekly three people sessions, a daily alignment session. We were getting things done again. The product owners making uh, is able to make a forecast and we have monthly roadmap sessions. Maybe some people of you already start recognizing some things that were happening. But then, yeah, everybody knows it. Once in a while you run into some issues. There are some, uh, some bugs that, yeah, we actually had uh, not even a real bug. We had a real big crash. Uh, a lot of servers, uh, uh, yeah, just crashed. It didn't go online again. We lost some data with the database, and everybody was was yeah was stressing. It was very special. Everybody was yelling, "What? What the function? What the function? Can you fix it?" And yeah, of course, in any team, the lead developer, he was a little bit late in the office when it happened. But as soon as he came in, he looked around, checked a couple of log files, he knew what it was, clickety clack, done, fixed. Everything was back online. And we're going back to work again. As net, nothing happened because, well, bugs and, and crashes can occur. Uh, but there's a lot of things to do to just continue working again. And yeah, you could already uh, uh, see it coming probably. There was another crash. So uh, again, servers went out. This time, logging was, well, there were also some issues with the logging server. So it wasn't that clear. And yeah. Basically, the, the most funny thing for me, but the last funny thing for the rest of the team was the lead developer also wasn't in there because he was on a day off. So it was a very, very stressful day for most of the developers. And uh, they just couldn't figure out what was happening. They were trying a lot of things, making it worse. And somewhere at the end of the day, they decided, well, let's just call the call the, the, the lead developer and see what happened. Uh, yeah, if he has any any clue what, what needs to be done there. And yeah, hopefully you can. And luckily for all of us and also the company, the lead developer was listening. He said, well, I might have an idea. Give me a couple of minutes. I will uh, grab my computer and log in. And within 10 minutes, everything worked again. And they called back, well, I fixed it. So I'll see you tomorrow. OK, see you tomorrow. And then next day, people came into the office. They were already forgotten what, 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 what happened there. and. They were going back to work, and I didn't agree with that. So I stepped in. I said, "Well, guys, please listen up. What what, what happened there? What what happened yesterday? And basically, also a couple of weeks ago, everything crashed. And there's one person who took takes a look, and everything works again. So let, let's think about that. What what, what happened there? Let's organize a, a post mortem uh, session, a blameless post mortem session, without pointing fingers, uh, without blaming anyone. Just yeah, see what happened there, what fixed it. Uh, is it really fixed? And how can we prevent this in the future? How can we get that knowledge that apparently only the lead developer has? How can we spread that to the rest of the team or make sure that everybody knows what to be done? 
so we did a blameless Paul Morstan. We found some issues. We found especially what was wrong. There was some firewall rules that were applied at some point that weren't documented, also not automated. So whenever this happened, most of the time after some of the instances restarted, a part of the network wasn't available anymore. And then it looked like everything was done, but actually it was still up, but people couldn't access it anymore. And the only person knowing about it was the lead developer who once set it up years ago. So back to work, we made some improvements uh, and we, yeah, uh, did a couple of more post-mortem sessions. Uh, some, I think months after, not exactly sure at, in the timeline anymore. Another thing also happened because uh, people were actually finding those post-mortem sessions fun. And during the roadmap sessions that we were having, sometimes they were asking, well, uh, what could go wrong? And yeah, how can we do those things? And uh, yeah, sometimes even the two crashes in a week happen. So we would have two post-mortem sessions in a week. Maybe we could combine those things and um, yeah, basically they, they increased the, the, the roadmap session a little bit to also include a post-mortem session if anything happened in the week before or a pre-mortem session if, if anything new that wanted to be worked on. What could go wrong? What could we prevent? What could, could, could we do to prevent any issues there? And things were actually going pretty well. Things were getting delivered. And that actually, actually was the next problem that we ran into because things were getting delivered. But were those actually the right things that were going to deliver? Uh, the product owners sometimes ask, well, when, when, when did you finish this? Because yesterday it was still, yeah, there needed to be a lot of work. And today it's, it's, yeah, it's in the done column. But when did you put it live? Because as soon as you put it live, I, I was supposed to, to mail some customers. I was supposed to do things. Uh, also, some st stakeholders from business were coming into the, to the team. Well. Can you show me what, when you're done? Can you show me what's happening? Can you show me what we need to do here? Uh, so, yeah, what 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 could we do here? What could, what could we do as a team? And I just asked the team, well, what could you do? What 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 would you suppose? So, any guess from the audience? And it's unfortunately nobody can can speak up what they came up with. And I think the the image here sees it a little bit. After six months of working together and we're doing no scrum anymore, they, they started doing business review sessions, as they called them the, themselves. Because yeah, they wanted to have some some way to, to, to inform the business, to inform the stakeholders uh, what they were working on and what they delivered. And they wanted to, to schedule it in a fixed time slot because they started doing it ad hoc. But yeah, then they were showing somebody in the business uh, one thing, and then the next day they needed to show the same thing again to somebody else. And then yeah, they were basically introducing a lot of sidesteps from their work, and they wanted to, to combine that, make it easier. And uh, yeah, they started doing uh, yeah review sessions, talk to the business, show what, what's done, show what's, uh, what's happening, and ask them also for input, ask them for feedback. So. Another small recap. Within a year, uh, when we stopped changing, doing Scrum, uh, we had a physical board with no more column, or with more columns. We had maximum items per column. We had regular three people sessions. Uh, we had regular roadmap sessions. We had a daily alignment session. We had regular business meetings, uh, roadmaps, and review sessions, and we had regular post and pre mortem sessions. So. Then was uh, some other event that we did once in a week, a, a lunch and learn, where we sit together as a team, uh, had our brown bag, but our own lunch with us, and we just talked about stuff that, that interested us. Sometimes people were, were showing uh, some of their pet projects. Sometimes uh, somebody gave a presentation, or we watched the video together. And during those uh, one of those lunch and learn sessions, they asked me, "Well, why are you still so so yeah so so fond of Scrum and Agile? Because yeah." What we're doing now is so much better. It works for so much better. It's for way more relaxed than all that scrum that we did in the past. So I asked, well, uh, I can tell you, but I, I love to tell you more about scrum, but I cannot do that during one hour during learn and lunch. Learn and lunch. So let, let's organize a, a morning uh, about three to four hours to just review the scrum framework and, and yeah, see what, what scrum framework has to offer. So what about scrum? I did a session on that. Scrum only has three roles or accountabilities, as they are called right now. Uh, five events, 
three artifacts, three pillars, and five values. So pretty easy, right? And just to check if everybody's still awake, are you familiar with all these terms? So everybody who's still listening to me who hasn't fallen asleep yet, now's your chance to, to signal that you heard from them. I see a yes, I see a not all. Not sure if more people are listening. I was hoping for one more, but let's not wait enough. And also if people are reviewing the session afterwards, there might be some other people who aren't familiar with everything. So let's give a quick recap. There are three accountabilities in Scrum. There's one product owner, one Scrum master, and yeah, the rest of the team consists of developers. The product owner is uh, accountable for maximizing the value of the product. And uh, he's doing effective backlog management, as it's called. So he's, he's prioritizing the work and making sure that the work being worked on first is the work that's most valuable to the company. There's one Scrum Master. Uh, the Scrum Master is uh, accountable for establishing Scrum as defined in the Scrum Guide. He's helping to, to, team the co to, to coach the team, to uh, remove any impediments if the, the team cannot remove the impediments themselves. And yeah, basically be a mentor, be a, a teacher, be a coach, uh, change engine in the company itself. So making sure that the, the Scrum process itself works for the team and works for the company around it. And everybody else there are developers. They are the persons, uh, the people that are actually delivering the value that the, the company requires, delivering the work, doing the work, and making things happen. There are five events within Scrum. Uh, basically, there's a sprint. There's the, the big two here, which is a container that contains all the other events. Uh, every sprint starts with the sprint planning, where we uh, look into the backlog and see what work we're going to uh, pick up next and work on during the next iteration, during the next sprint. That can be yeah, at the maximum one calendar month. And most of the time will be somewhere uh, one or two or even three weeks. Uh, every day, there's a daily scrum, a fixed time box of 15 minutes where we look back at what, we're, what we've done, look forward, how are we going? Uh, what are we going to do today? Are we running into any impediments? What is holding us back? At the end of the sprint, we're doing a sprint review and a sprint retro retrospective. Within the review, we uh, connect back with all the stakeholders, to the customers, show what we've done, get feedback, uh, see what's in front of us, is anything changed in the market. In the retrospective, we look, at, uh, look back at our process. How did we work together? How did everything work out? How can we improve? There are three artifacts. The product backlog, which is basically one large list of everything that needs to be done in order to, to, yeah, to create value for the company. There's a sprint backlog. Uh, yeah, a tiny selection of the work from the product backlog, what we're actually going to work on during the next sprint. And there's an increment. There's a finished product, a finished thing that can be worked on, that can be uh, put in production, that can be used. There are five values. Uh, everything that uh, yeah, the, the, the values give direction in the Scrum team with regards to the work, the actions, and the behavior of the team. So uh, people are committed to, 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 uh, to deliver value. People are trying to actually do their best to, to, to achieve what, what they want to achieve, what they want to do. Uh, they show focus, uh, sh uh, focus by, by only doing one thing at a time, focus by, uh, <clears throat> uh, yeah, focus on the work that actually needs to be done. Uh, be open about things, be open to each other, uh, be respectful for each other uh, and show courage. And especially the last two are also showing courage in, in yeah, saying no to things, saying no to the business, uh, stepping up for your, your decisions in the past. Uh, I know these are still a bit uh, hard to touch, but so if you have any questions about these, come find me later. Uh, and Scrum is based on three pillars of Scrum, transparency, inspection, and adaptation. It's an empirical process, uh, yeah, where you want to make things transparent. Um, by making things transparent, it becomes easier and it becomes uh, possible to inspect what is happening. And by inspecting, you can make changes to make it better or make it work. This is also one of the things that inspired me or, or uh, that I really loved about Scrum. Because as a developer, the first thing I always did was, oh, I wanted to make my, my 
development environment working. I wanted to have a step debugger. I wanted to make things transparent. Then I was just going to inspect. I was going to try things, change some variables, uh, just fire up a page, do the step debugger, and walk through the code, inspect what was happening. And then if I wanted to make a change, yeah, make that change, make that adaption, and, and see what happened again, and repeat the cycle over and over again. So are we doing Scrum? That was the question that I asked the, the, the team, but actually the team itself already said, well, we are we're kind of doing Scrum already, right? Because yeah, we have still three accountabilities. They're still the product owner. Yeah, we previously had a, a Scrum master, but yeah, right now you're acting sort of as a Scrum master because you're organizing some events and yeah. And we have the developer, so all checked. We have, yeah, we now actually have those five events. We have a regular roadmap session, which could be conf uh, confused with our sprint planning. We have time between those roadmap sessions. Okay, it's not, not completely fixed, but at least somewhere between three to four weeks. Uh, we have daily alignment sessions. Now, that could be the daily scrum. We have regular business review sessions, sprint review. We have post and pre-mortem sessions, which are currently part of the planning, but could be, yeah, since it's almost a separate session, but directly after could be the, the sprint retrospective. And we have regular peop uh, three people sessions with, yeah, isn't an actual event within Scrum, but yeah, it's refinement where we're refining things. We are getting things uh, clear what we, we need to be worked on. Uh, we have three artifacts. We have the Jira backlog because a lot of information was still stored there, which could be the, the product backlog. We have the physical board, which is a sprint backlog. And we have actually working product, the increment. Five values, we have courage. We show focus by maximum number of uh, items per column. We have openness. Everybody can see, I can take a look at the, at the physical board. We have blameless post mortem meetings. We show respect to each other within those pre and post mortem meetings. We show respect to each other, what, what everybody knows during the pre three people sessions. And we are committed. We actually want to, to make this work. We want to, to be, become better. Yeah, the three pillars, I don't think I need to repeat them. So everything is doing with them. So, uh, is this team actually doing Scrum? And that's again a question to the audience who is there. So I'm wondering if, if people are still listening. Yeah, I see a yes, I see another yes. And because of the time, I'm not going to wait for any additional answers because I'm running a little bit late. I just say, no, they're doing something that looks like Scrum, but they're not using the full Scrum framework yet. And uh, for me, this is what, what Scrum is all about. It, it's, uh, you see it here a little bit on the, on the picture. You're running those cycles, you, you're doing that, but you're running towards a goal. You're running towards that thing that's, that's showing there, that, that, that done increment. So for me, what, what Scrum actually is, is, is bringing a focus into, into your work, bringing a use, working with a goal in mind. Uh, with the last update of the, the Scrum Guide uh, last year, uh, the 2020 version of Scrum Guide, uh, that even became more clear. Right now, the word goal is mentioned 38 times in the Scrum Guide. Uh, since the Scrum Guide is only 14 pages long, that is a lot. And there are even two types of goals within the Scrum Guide. There's the product goal and the sprint goal, where the product goal uh, combines is a commitment for everything there in the, in the product backlog. Everything in the product backlog is regarding that product goal, re regarding that vision. And the sprint backlog, as a sprint goal, every sprint, we, we set ourselves a goal and we're going to work towards that. And the way I always explain that is everybody knows the iron triangle. And I always display it a little bit different because I display it like this. There's time, budget, and quality. And with Waterfall, scope was always holy. Don't want to touch scope. So one thing there, yeah, to joke there is we have time to budget and quality. Pick one, and uh, pick two. You cannot pick all three. And then the first thing that was going down was quality most of the time and bugs were going to happen and you're you're getting in a downward spiral uh, with scrum basically time is fixed we are, we we're planning for two weeks budget is fixed we know what people are available within the two weeks and uh, you don't want to mess with quality then you get technical depth everything yeah it will bite you uh in the backside so if you set yourself a clear goal, you know what you're, you want to achieve by the end of two weeks. The only thing you can, can fiddle a little bit with is that scope and try to be creative. So setting a goal for yourself really helps you in, in, in getting
getting focused in, in working together and actually achieving what, what that goal was instead of uh, yeah, lowering quality and, and doing all the other stuff. Another thing is that that thing at the end, it needs to be done, but what is done? And within Scrum, you have the definition of done, which is again, a commitment to that, that increment. So uh, the definition of done is a checklist, sort of a checklist for the team that is commonly understood on and what, what is actually done, what, what work has been uh, achieved. Uh, when, when can we actually say that, that this is item is done? And well, basically after the, the, the session I did, everybody was feeling positive again. And they also wanted to try starting with those goals. So they started working on, on, on sprint goals and they were starting to, to work on uh, yeah, their own definition of done. And this is where my story ends. Because within one and a half years, uh, we had a team that didn't want to, to work Scrum, didn't want to do Scrum, actually came up with the process all by themselves with a little bit of guidance from me. And they were, yeah, they were actually doing Scrum, or at least something that it's closely familiar. Uh, things are getting done again. Everybody is happy. Uh, my assignment ended after yeah, a little over one and a half years. So I left the team. And... The funny thing was that the person who was a Scrum Master previously, uh, he didn't want to be the Scrum Master anymore. He didn't like the, the, the way I was interesting. Uh, but one of the other developers, there still unfortunately wasn't enough budget to get a full-time developer of a full-time Scrum Master, but he was, had some feeling for it. And for me, the most funny thing was that that was also the person who was mostly against Scrum when we started. But actually the, the same thing that, that clicked for me, clicked for him and he, he saw the benefit of using Scrum and he, uh, Actually, when I spoke to him two years ago, he actually is no longer a developer. He now is a full-time Scrum Master. So is this team still doing Scrum? Uh, they're still trying to. It's still it's still very hard, especially the, 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 the environment surrounding it. Uh, work is trying to, to, to get past. Sometimes you have multiple things that you need to work on. But yeah, trying to get back to the basis, trying to, to, to set yourself that goals, trying to be uh, committed, trying to be open about what you're actually delivering, really helped this team and really uh, made sure that everybody was, was doing the right thing and things were, were happening and working again. So the takeaways of, of, of this story, takeaway of my story is it's change and understanding takes time. If you, if you don't want to change, if you, uh, you resist to it, or at least, yeah, if you don't want to change, you're going to resist to it. So forcing a process, forcing a framework upon people without any understanding, uh, it doesn't work. Uh, people need to understand, people need to know why things are, 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 are the way it is in order to actually do it. And that's also one of the, the, the biggest uh, accountabilities of Scrum Master. Make sure that the whole team understands what, yeah, uh, what, why they're doing things. Uh, Scrum is a framework. A lot of things have changed since it one, for, uh, first was introduced back in 2010. A lot of things are removed. Uh, a lot of things are, are uh, yeah, the wording has changed. But in the core, Scrum is still is still there. It, it's, it's very simple, but very hard to implement. So, yeah, the title of this is this talk, Stop Doing Scrum, is what I mean is, yeah, do not do Scrum. Don't do it because you need to do it. Uh, do it because you believe in it. You know why it is. So be agile. Do not do Scrum. Be agile.